Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to continue in Nightfall by Maria Troll and we are going to continue with another video or the next video in a series for my Adult Coloring for Beginner series that is going on on my channel right now. For those of you that have not seen the previous videos in that series, I will make sure that I link the playlist in the upper right hand corner as well as down in the description box. So please do check for that. I don't want you to miss out on any of those videos. So let's go ahead and talk about the page that we're coloring. We are going to continue coloring this page here. And today what we're going to do is I am going to show you where to get inspiration when you are coloring certain things. Today we are going to color this fawn and I'm going to show you how it can be much easier rather than overwhelming when you look at something that you've probably never colored before. A lot of us like to stick to coloring flowers and things like that, especially when we first start out coloring. But it's very important to increase your skill by expanding upon that and coloring other things. For those of you that don't have this book, I would suggest pulling out another coloring book or something that may have any kind of animal in it so that you could follow along and you could practice along with us. If you enjoy these kinds of videos and you want to continue seeing these videos and seeing my videos every time I post them, please do make sure you subscribe to my channel and also turn your bell notifications on because I would love for you to continue to follow along with this beginner series if you are a beginner and even if you're not a beginner and you've been coloring for a while, some of the videos that I'm going to be posting in this series are really targeted at anybody that is coloring or enjoys this adult coloring hobby. Also do make sure that you give this video a thumbs up because it really does help my videos out a lot and I appreciate it so much. So let's go ahead and get into the video. The first thing we need to do is we need to pick out our colors. But the way that we're going to do that is I am going to use a picture of a fawn and I am going to put one or several different pictures at different times up on the screen so that you all can view them and you can see exactly what I'm doing. I am going to match a few different pencils to those pictures. I have them in front of me up on my computer screen and so you guys will be able to follow along because you will see those on your screen too as you're watching the video. So let me go ahead and get my pictures out and I am going to look at some colors and pull out my swatch sheet and I will come back and show you what I did. I have my swatch sheet here and I've not chosen any colors yet. I want to do that on camera so that you all can do it with me and see how I do it. Of course I am using the Arteza 120 set of pencils and these are the pencils I am going to stick to in my beginner series. If you are interested in these pencils, I will have links down in the description below, as well as a discount code for you to be able to use for the Arteza site. So if we are looking at the pictures of the deer, they should be on the screen for you guys right now. And I've got three different pictures. They'll probably be up at different times depending on what part of the deer we're coloring. And I don't know how many pictures I'll be able to put up on the screen when I'm editing the video so that you guys can still be able to see what I'm coloring. So I've got a picture of just the face of a fawn so that we could do the face and see where the coloring is and such. And then I've got two different fawns facing different directions so that we could see every part of the animal on the screen. So if you look at the fawn, you will see, if you look at the neck, you'll see lots of very light areas and like whiter areas. They look white, but when we're doing white, when we are coloring, we don't generally always use white. Um, we tend to use much lighter grays, and I'll have to see what I can come up with um, as far as the Arte Arteza set and what we have available to us in this set. And then if you look at the top of his head, you can see much darker uh, reddish, orangish brown tones. 
and the inside of the ears are, I would say, kind of like a pinkish kind of tone in a couple of the pictures I've looked at. And then some of them have a lot of white with very pale tans. So if you look at the picture, you'll see where the shading is gonna go on the deer. And then of course he's got his uh, white spots and underneath the deer or the fawn would be a lot of white and much lighter shades. So our darker shades are gonna stay to the top of the fawn of course, we're gonna go around. If you look at the picture in this book, you'll see that we've got all the spots on the deer. Just like in the picture, I tried to make sure that I was very pretty much on it when I pulled the pictures up. So I was trying to match the fact that the one in the picture had a lot of spots as well, so we could make sure we get those colored in the right way according to what a real um, fawn would look like in realism. So let's go ahead and get started and look at our colors. So if you have the Arteza set of pencils already, I want you to go ahead and look um, at your browns, at your selection of browns. I've got my selection of browns right here. And I also have one that has a lot of yellow but brown in it, or yellow and orange but brown in it up here. And this one is called Camel Brown but then I have more that are similar down in this area. So I'm gonna look at the deer and I'm just going to pick out a few colors that tend to match the colors that I'm pulling from the picture or that I'm seeing in the picture. So you should be looking at the picture up on your screen and also be able to see the swatch sheet. So I have gone through and I've picked some colors and kind of matched them up as much as I possibly could with the picture of the deer. So we of course will need a color for our darkest of shading because if you look at the picture, the one of the side view of the deer, you could see right there behind his ear that there's some very dark areas and then underneath his legs would be some darker areas. And so anywhere that the shadows are going to be, of course, those areas are going to be darker. If you look at his back hind legs, you can see in the picture that that very back hind leg looks almost to be like a darker gray color. So we're gonna see what we can come up with and start coloring this. Um, if you look at his back as well, you could see darker colors, but not as dark. So we're gonna look at the hazelnut brown I've got the hazelnut brown, and if you look at the hazelnut brown on here, it is, let me zoom this in a little bit, but if you look at the hazelnut brown, it is fairly dark, and that is only gonna be used for areas of shadowing. Now on the back, on his very back, on the top of him, that to me looks as though it is a very close match to cinnamon. So that's what we're gonna use there, and then towards the back, of the deer as well as we come down into his legs and as we come further down you could see that it starts to get lighter and to me that looks a lot like raw sienna and a little bit of ginger and I've swatched these out and so they do look really good together. So we'll see what happens when we start laying them down on the page and coloring the deer. As far as the white areas, we may leave some of those areas white. And like I've shown you in previous videos, leave the white of the paper so that we can utilize the white of the paper and create those shadows because there's not really a perfect color to accentuate those areas like where the fawn's spots are, or under his neck, or in some areas of his ear. So let's go ahead and start with our darkest color, which is going to be our hazelnut brown. And I'm gonna zoom you in a little bit more. And we are, if you look at the picture, you could see that, oh wait a second, we're not using a hazelnut brown. We're setting that one aside until we get to the darkest area. So, we're looking at the cinnamon, I'm sorry. So yes, the cinnamon is the color we're going to be using and where we're gonna start, and that is the one that matches the best with his back up here. 
So we're just going to start shading in very lightly. Try not to go over any of those spots because those spots are going to remain white. I may even be able to come back with some Bos Posca for those spots. If you plan on doing that and you want to use Posca on your own for those areas, in that case it would be okay to color over the spots, but I don't know what I'm doing yet, so I am going to go around the spots. So the darkest area where we're going to use this cinnamon is just going to be on the top of the deer. And see, I'm going out of the lines a little bit, so I may need to end up using Posca. Who knows? We'll see when we get there. I never know what I'm doing when I first start out, and I just kind of color, and as it comes to me, I just kind of go with it. So if you look under the neck, you can see that underneath the neck, there's a lot of white. But on this deer, he is kind of turned and the neck is kind of facing downward. So I don't want to come too far, but there is going to be some shadowing right here under him just because of the way his neck is turning. So I would imagine there would be shadowing kind of in here, but his neck is white down through here. So we're not going to go too far over. And I would imagine that the tail would be a little bit darker. I don't think that I got a picture of the tail at any of the angles that I got. So I'm just going to kind of imagine how the tail would look and I'm just going to shade it a little bit. And do it the way that I want to and not necessarily worry about how it would actually look. Okay, so we've got a little bit of that laid down and it looks like if we look at the picture that it actually, in the picture, comes down pretty low. So, and then it's actually coming back even darker into the back of his leg. So let's go ahead and go way down the back of his leg. And I'm kind of going over here with a little bit of a second layer because it's actually with the second layer looking much more like it does in the picture. It's very hard to stay off these spots. I may have to come back and wipe them out with Posca because it's kind of difficult as your paper is, or your, as your uh, wax from your pencil is being grabbed from the tooth of the paper. It's kind of difficult to stay out of these spots. This is such a pretty color. And it's almost exact to the picture. Okay, I think that this is probably a little further down. I'm kind of going slow because I'm trying to kind of look at the picture and just color as I go, and you should be doing the same thing. Now remember that you can get more than one shade out of one pencil. So in the areas where the deer is darker, you just use more pressure. See how it is much darker here? than it is as I get over here. But over here, if you look at the picture, it needs to be even darker. Now look at that change. And I even, probably in this area over here, I'm gonna to have to come back with my much darker color because that area should be much more shaded. So I'm going much lighter as I go down into the deer. I'm 
Just make sure you don't go too far into this area because this area down here is going to remain very light. I think that maybe we should start pulling in some of the raw sienna. Now I had another color that was absolutely amazing and really looked like it fit the color of the deer and it was this earth red and it's a very different color. But I'm kind of wondering if we should add that, a little bit of that in there instead, but I'm really not sure. I'm going to hold that one aside and I'm going to come in with my raw sienna and I'm just going to kind of start shading and adding to this one or the other color. And look how beautifully that is coming together. These pencils blend so nicely. Now this color has a lot more brown in it and probably a little bit of a yellow maybe. But it kind of gives this deer a little bit of variation. And I'm going to put some down here in the tail and kind of pull this through. And I'm going to lighten it up as I come through. But you want to blend it into the previous color and kind of go over the previous color. And again, you can use one color to create other shades from that one pencil. So I think here towards more towards the front of his leg is going to be a lot lighter. Down here underneath his stomach is where you're going to see a lot of the uh, white. These colors are really close to what you would see in the image, but of course they're not exact. Again, we are using a more budget-friendly type of pencil, but that's okay because there is still a great range of colors in this set and I absolutely love this set. And I'm just kind of blending this right in with our previous color so I can add that variation in there. And then I'm going to come very lightly in these other areas. And let's see what our next color is. So our next shade, we're going to add a little bit of ginger. And I'm just kind of blending this one throughout as well. And I do not want to push hard at all with this color. because I want it to remain very light. Let's go ahead and do a little bit of this leg here and I'm going to do this with the ginger. Oh, these pencils are like a dream to work with in this book. They go down so nicely with this paper. Let's go ahead and get some of our cinnamon 
and come in here on this leg where I would imagine that there would be a shadow where his body is. Anytime you've got something laying behind something else, you're always going to have a shadow there. And what this is doing is just creating some dimension. Even though this area here is going to be much lighter. So I have my ginger again and I'm just going to pull this down just a little. And then I want this area probably, oh, I don't know, maybe right in here. Or maybe just under his neck. I've got two different pictures I'm looking at. And so the one where he's looking straight forward at me, the only white is just right here. So then we would come down, this is our lighter color. So it is going to remain very light over in this area. And I want to make sure that this is, here is almost white. But over here, we do need some color. So I'm just going to come in very lightly. And I want to keep that variation here between these two colors because I want this to remain darker. And then I'm going to pull this down. I believe that this ginger is the lightest of all of my colors that I chose and there's really not another color that is that much lighter than this one so what we're gonna have to do is we're definitely gonna have to use the paper but that goes right along with what I showed you guys in the last tutorial where we used the paper in our favor to create the highlights so we are just further expanding on that today with this deer. So over in here it should remain very, very light. If you look at the pictures, all underneath here and everything is going to all remain extremely light. Well, I pulled out the mushroom gray and I'm going to try something. Normally if I was using an artist grade type pencil, I would use grays instead of my whites. I'm going to utilize the white of the paper, but I'm also going to try and, try and come in with a little bit of this gray and see if it is light enough to create the effect that we are going for. Never be afraid to try something different. And I don't know if that is, let's use it down here. Yeah, it works. And then when you color everything else in around the deer, it will really make that pop and look more white than gray. I kind of like how that worked. And then I'm going to keep it whiter down here in the bottom portion. And in the front of this leg, I'm going to add a little bit of this mushroom gray. And see how you really can't see it and it still looks like it's white. You just don't want to push too hard because that will change the way that it looks. And then you'll have too much on your paper. And then it really will look gray. 
So let's come back here and I think we need to add a little bit more color here, probably with our ginger. So let's pull this through a little bit more. Remember ginger was our lightest of colors that we had chosen. And we're gonna come back in here with a little bit more gray. Again, this is my mushroom gray and it actually seems to be working quite well. I could always use my white quartz and come back over it again. And I'm probably going to need Posca to cover up my white spots because I'm not doing a very good job of staying off of them or staying out of the lines rather. Oh, his leg goes all the way down here. Of course, there is a lot of plants and such down here and flowers. So this is all going to be very deeply shadowed. And what was the color we had for our deep shadowing? We had the hazelnut brown. So I'm gonna come down in here and I'm gonna add my hazelnut brown. And wait till you see what a difference this makes. Adding in the darkest shading color is always what dramatically changes everything. So like if I would imagine that this was all much darker and shaded all in through here and around here where I've got this um, flower and then down here where his leg is meeting the the his belly or the underside of him. And right in here, we are going to need much darker shading. And see how it just kind of pulls things together? It makes such a difference. Look at that. And then if I were to come back with my cinnamon and kind of pull this through, then it kind of a little bit changes the color back to that reddish color. These pencils are pretty amazing. They work so well, especially in this book. Okay, so I'm gonna turn it just a little bit and come in here where I need more shading with my raw sienna. Or no, it was supposed to be the hazelnut and it's in my hand. Okay, so the hazelnut right under here. Look at the difference. And then over here on the top part of his back, we are going to want to darken it up. This is a fantastic shading color. See, I'm kind of pulling it down and bringing it down into his back a little bit more. But then you could always come back with the previous color and go over that again and pull it down to keep that red tone that is actually in the deer like you see in the picture. But back over here, it was much darker. And over here where his tail meets his body, that area would naturally be darker as well. And then here we've got his, or the back of his leg, right up against the flower. So I'm going to add a little bit of this darker color in there. And then I'm gonna come back with my, my cinnamon 
and I'm going to pull these through. Look how well these pencils blend together, especially on this paper. And oh my gosh, and to think that I took these Arteza pencils and I bought them for my kids and my grandkids. They're really amazing pencils. And they work really well with Prismacolors. I really need a color that is going to bring us more highlights, I think. I'm really starting to get the color of the deer now. Yeah, when you're first starting, make sure that you go slow. because it is always much easier to go slow and not put color where you may not want it because it's much more difficult to lift it with an eraser. This is my ginger you could see how it's coming now that we're getting a lot of the pigment down on paper and blending a lot of these colors through so it's much easier to see now the variance in the colors and the transitions I'm just I'm probably gonna come back with Posca and handle all the little spots on the deer because it's just too hard to stay out of all those little dots okay so how about we start a little bit on the face so we could kind of see it come together a little bit I'm going to start over here I'm looking at the picture that is looking at me directly of the face and you all should see it up on the screen so I'm going to come, on, come in here with my darkest of colors and I'm just going to try to copy what I see in that picture. And you can see that that deer has a little bit of darker colors in here and a little bit in here. And again, I'm just copying. I'm copying exactly what I see. And when I first started coloring, I did this all the time, and I still do it. And it makes a world of difference. So this part right here should be the lighter, so we're going to come in with a little bit of fog gray in here. This isn't the fog gray. This is the mushroom gray. I'm sorry. But I'm just kind of going to pull this out a little bit. And then I'm going to come back in with, I think that we need to try to kind of fade it a little bit, but it doesn't look like the cinnamon. I don't know, maybe it should be a little bit lighter in here is what it's looking like. and over here on into this side. So, I don't know, maybe a little bit of ginger? Let's try that and see what look we get. It looks like it would be ginger up in here. And over here, right to the side of the eye. And it looks much lighter up here, so I'll have to pull that back out again. And then, what do we 
got down here. We have a little bit of darkening down here by where the mouth is, but I think in this area, right up under the nose, we can use the mushroom gray again and try to kind of pull that through a little bit. And then over here, I'm going to try to kind of pull this down. And then I think I need to add a little bit more of some darker shading in here. I think maybe I'll try a little bit of the raw sienna to try to kind of pull this down a little bit. of course blend it into the other color and under and around the eyes it is darker and I think actually I need a little bit more of the hazelnut brown right up under the eyes oh yes that looks good really makes the eyes stand out always remember to pull down with your pencil. But the corner of the eye looks like it's got more pigment in it. And then up in here. And I think I'm going to darken this area up just a bit. And in here as we come through. And then I'm going to come in here and kind of pull a little bit of this out with the cinnamon. And then up here, I'm gonna pull this out. Right now I'm using the ginger. And so I'm going to pull this out a little bit because closer to the top or the top of the eye, I'm going to add a little bit of this mushroom gray. Now see how you can make colors really work for you? Like, would you have thought that I would have brought gray into this? And then over here by the mouth, it should be a little lighter in there. And I want to make sure that it is lighter all in here because I really want this part to stand out. But right here, I believe that it was the hazelnut brown that I used. So I just need to come in with maybe a little bit of cinnamon and pull that out a little bit so that it doesn't look so harsh. And to do that, I'm just gonna kind of do this and just kind of pull it down and through. Now remember, since this is a series for beginners, I am showing you the much more basic way to go about doing this. I could get really into how to make it look like fur and all of that, but we are really just practicing our blending techniques in these videos and learning more so about color and not necessarily getting into all of that more complicated stuff. But you can do some amazing things with colored pencils and you could really make it look like there is actually fur on the deer. It just requires a pretty sharp point of your pencil. So I'm going to come in there and then over here. And I think I like the way the face looks and maybe a little bit, I think this is, oh, this is the ginger, but just a little ginger in here just to try to add a little bit to this one, but I want to leave it white right here on the outside. And then I want to take my hazelnut brown and I really want to darken up under these eyes. 
right here. I may get a darker color for that because if you look at the deer in the picture, I think it is probably much darker there. And then I'm going to try to pull a little bit of this down. And let's check out the head. So we would have like white right here, as you could see in the picture. And starting right about here is where the color starts to get deeper. I mean, do you guys see how I'm just kind of copying? Now see, if I wanted to make this much more advanced, if you're looking at the picture, you can see that the deer has a lot of wrinkles in his face and other things. And those could actually also be drawn in. But we're not doing that today because <laughs> that's much more, um, more advanced and more complicated. And we want to keep it simple. This is my cinnamon. And do I want to? Yes, we just have a very small area here, and then this should be coming out like this. Do you see how it just kind of really starts to come together? And let me see what my lightest of shades are. I think it's the ginger. So I'm just going to kind of do that right in that area. And then I want to go ahead and if you could see the top of his head, we're just going to shade all of this in with this ginger color. And of course, I'm going to blend another color into this. And I'm probably going to blend in a little bit of the raw sienna. And... Huh. The raw sienna and the cinnamon. So I'm just going to come in here and I'm going to blend some of this in just to create that variation we talked about. And I'm going to go all the way to the back of the head because you could see that it is darker up there. And kind of down into here. And I am going very lightly with my pencil very lightly. This deer that we're looking at has a lot of white around his ear and then he even has a little bit of black but in our picture this is the or in our coloring page this is the front of his ear not necessarily the back of the ear. But we do have this area right here that I would use my um, darkest color for, which would be my hazelnut. And I think just to create a little bit of dimension, we are going to come in there and do that like that. And I'm just trying to blend the color outward, like make this darker where it should be, but kind of blend the color into the other colors just to make it look more natural. And then I need a lighter color. And I'm going to pull this up and through just a little bit. It seems as though every time I want to film, somebody decides they want to mow their lawn. So I apologize for that in the background, but... Okay, I like the way this is looking. So far, I think I want a little bit more of this over here. 
and I might actually speed some of this up and maybe show you the colors as I come in and I add them. Okay, so let me finish a little bit more and then I think that we are going to speed this up just a little, but I think I need the cinnamon all a little bit coming through this area here. I'm just trying to create a variation in colors so that it looks more natural. And again, I'm trying to keep it white here and white here so that we've got our shadows and the way that the fur is laying. But I don't want too much of this color because it has a lot of red in it. I think I'm going to come back with my ginger and kind of blend this through. I think that this ginger is one of the closest colors to the fur on the actual deer in the picture but sometimes when you're using a certain set of pencils you don't always have all the options so you just have to kind of go with what you got and that's what I did I think we need to darken it up in these areas a little bit more down here by his legs and such and so I'm gonna come back with a little bit more hazelnut brown And I'm just trying to create a lot more dimension in these areas. I love how this color kind of mixes in with the rest and the contrast that it creates because it's really making quite a bit of difference and then you can always come back over with your other colors and change it a little bit let's go ahead and come back up here to the top of his head because up in here we are going to have to create a little bit more of these darker areas Look what a difference that makes. Okay, and then of course here on the ear, on the ear where you could already see that there are lines here. I may not do this exactly like it's is on the picture because it's kind of hard to tell. And then if you could see, depending on where the light is hitting and depending on the difference in the deers, they kind of have different colors in their ears. But I'm thinking that I really want to add a little bit of pink in there, in the ears. I'm going to pull this out with some cinnamon. And then I think that I want to go maybe to my raw sienna. And I'm really thinking that I just want the center of his ear to be like a uh, like a pinkish color because I see that in some of the pictures let me do the other ear I had already laid down quite a bit of this color but I'm just trying to kind of spread it out a little bit more And I think we need to put a little bit of raw sienna 
was that the raw sienna already? I think that might have been the raw sienna already. Maybe a little bit of cinnamon. Again, just for some variation here. And that will do a nice job of bringing the um, whatever pink or pinkish color that I choose, that'll do a really nice job of pulling that in because it's got some red in it. So I might want to put like a little bit of pink up in here. And then here I want to add a little bit of this color for dimension. Because I don't really like that dark, dark brown and only the dark brown. Okay, so now let me come back with the hazelnut brown. And I'm going to make sure that we've got plenty of shadowing in here. Don't be afraid to add more of your darker variations because that is what is going to make it pop off the page aside from everything else. You can see as I lay it down the difference that it makes. And then we're going to come up here and do a little bit more of this here on the top. You need to make sure when you do this that you've got pretty sharp leads. And most of you know that I always recommend the same pencil sharpener because in my eyes there is no other. <laughs> but the Doll 133 is a great sharpener. And I will have that linked for you in the description like I always do. This darker brown is making such a difference. Okay, I think that I'm going to go ahead and speed it up. And you can watch this deer come to life before your eyes. And as I'm doing it, I will also leave the um, picture of the deer on the corners of the screen so that you could kind of watch it as it comes to life with color. I think that that would be really cool. Sometimes that makes it a lot easier to be able to just try to kind of imagine exactly what you're going to do as you're putting your colors down on the paper. So let's go ahead and try that now.
Okay, so my deer is now done, and as you can see, it's been all burnished in as much as I possibly could for now, and just to save the length of the video, and I know you guys all get the idea, I want to come back and show you what I'm going to do with the Posca. I'm going to come in with my Posca and just add some white in some of these areas where I feel like they should be whiter. And I just want to add a little bit of highlight. And I feel like my Posca should be coming out whiter than this. There we go. I think it's where it goes now. Right there and then kind of up here of course this is a beginner tutorial so you guys don't really need to do this part if you don't want to but I'm just showing you exactly what I do. And then I'm going to come back over here. And this is generally where you may need it so that you could add the little bit of extras that you want to add. Right there on the nose is a good place. And then so I'm just going to come back in where the dots are on the fawn. And I am going to cover those up so that it could look just like the picture. And like I told you earlier in the beginning of the video, if you wanted to come back and do this, then you didn't really have to worry about whether or not you covered. I'm just trying to cover the black. <laughs> I got distracted. But you didn't have to worry about whether or not you were covering all these little dots. And this is always the easiest way to come back and do it if you've got either a white gel pen or a white Posca. Of course, I'll have all of this linked down in the description below for you so that you can check it out if you're interested. I'll also have the playlist down there for this beginner series. And I know that this video seems like it may have been a little bit more advanced but I just wanted to show you in this video that you don't need to always stick to coloring the same things a lot of people that are beginners would not necessarily think oh let me color an animal like I feel like they generally stick to things like flowers and Joanna Basford books and things like that and of course there's a lot of flowers in this book too but if you always stick to flowers, then you're never going to expand your creativity and your skill and learn to color other things. And trying to make sure that all the black is covered. Because I don't want to see any more black lines and I really like how this looks. I'm glad that I decided to come back over it with the Posca. But I did add a little bit of differences where I wanted to kind of get creative, as you could tell, in the speed through. So even though it may not exactly match the picture, it's always great to use the picture or use a picture of anything you're coloring just to give you some kind of inspiration or lead you kind of in the right direction. If you guys are beginners, or even if you're not beginners, and you've been coloring for a while, and you do follow this tutorial with your Arteza pencils, or any other pencils, I would love to see what you did and what you created, if you would like to share that in my Facebook group. And if you're not already in my Facebook group, there will be a link down in the description and you just need to put in a request to join. 
but it's a wonderful group and we have probably close to 2,500 members now and it is growing every single day and it's a wonderful community. Everybody's so supportive and nice and it's a great place for anybody, including beginners, especially now that I'm doing this series. And I really encourage everybody who is a beginner to come into my group and share your work because I know sometimes you join groups and you're just there to be there and then you kind of forget about them. But I would like to encourage you to come in there and share what you're working on. So I think I got most all of these, and then I think I want a little bit of white in the tail, and a little bit over here. See how I'm just kind of sweeping it a little with my finger? And then a lot of times, like, I covered up the black lines that are on here. And a lot of times I will come back. It's always best to kind of dot your Posca like that so it only goes in the areas that you want it. And I probably should have done it over here, but it's probably already dry. That's okay. I'll just come back over that again and fix it with some pencil. Don't ever worry that you feel like you might have made a mistake somewhere, like what I just did. I don't ever look at that as a mistake because everything is fixable and you can always come right back and go over things and fix them. But I think I've got my deer looking exactly the way that I want it. And I might come back in and fix it a little bit more off camera with my darker color now that it's in between, kind of in between the Posca like I am now. But I really love how it turned out. And I hope you enjoyed this video. I think that it was quite a long video, but I hope you got something out of it. And I hope that you do try this. Find a picture and just color from that picture and see what you're able to get out of it because it really is a big huge help and if you liked this video please make sure you do give this video a thumbs up because it helps my channel out immensely and this is a really big series that I'm doing um, the adult coloring for beginners and I would like it to kind of get around Facebook and the more that you like my videos the more it will be suggested to others and it's been a pretty popular series and I plan to continue with it and doing lots of tutorials. So please make sure that you do subscribe to my channel and also turn on your bell notifications. Everything that you've seen in this video, including the Arteza pencils, will be linked down in the description below. And I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Happy coloring. Bye.